Hi, welcome back. Today we're going to secure single store and we're going to secure all of the things. As we look at securing single store, we will secure the single store engine, we'll secure single store studio, and we'll open up the web socket using SSL. Now we have created videos on each of these steps before, but it'll be fun to see all of the pieces come together. The first step is to grab an SSL certificate. If we're in production, we'll look to VeriSign or to Let's Encrypt to include a certificate that has a valid trust chain. If we're in a corporate environment, we'll use SSL from our PKI provider to ensure that the trusted root certificate is installed into each PC using Active Directory. For local development, we probably end up with a dizzying amount of OpenSSL commands that eh, are, for better or worse, kind of awkward. Let's use Mixert to create a, cert a local certificate with a trust chain that we can use both on our Windows machine here and on our single store database. Here's single store, our single store database, and we're connected through single store studio. Notice that we're not connected securely, and also our connection to the database is not secure as well. So we'll secure all the things. I've downloaded Mixert onto my machine, and the first step is to do a Mixert install. Here's Mixert.exe for Windows and Mixert for Linux that we'll use as we dial into our cluster. Let's run Mixert install. This will not only create a root certificate, but it'll invite us to install it into our trusted root certificate store. Yes, I do. Now we have this trusted root certificate here in app data local mixert. We're going to grab both the trusted root certificate and the key, and we'll set it into the place where we have a shared folder with our Linux box. This certificate is also in our trusted root certificate store. If we come in here to our user certificate store, we can go into trusted root certificates. We'll say refresh, and scrolling down, we can see this mixert certificate. Because we have now a common root certificate that we can trust on both Windows and Linux, then when we use our certificate on Linux, we'll be able to browse to it from Windows and it will work just fine. Next, let's get into our Linux box. We're going to start up Mixert as root. We'll put Mixert in our path so that we can use it everywhere. Here's the directory that Mixert will use. We now have both the root certificate and the root certificate key in the spot that Mixert expects that trusted root to be. Now when we run Mixert install, we use that exact same trusted root certificate that we used on Windows, and we now have it as our Linux root user. We've created a directory for our certificates that we can use in all the places we need to with single store. Back as our regular user, let's install Mixert here as well. Now we've got both our root certificate and key. Let's install it into Mixert. Great, now both our root user and our local user trust this certificate. Next, let's create an example certificate. Now here in our certs directory, we have a certificate that matches all of the host names that we could possibly use on this machine. Now let's apply this to the database engine. We set the configuration on all nodes so that all nodes can communicate with each other. Now that we've set the configuration, let's restart the nodes to get it to take effect. Now let's log in and check. The show status command is, allows us to see the connection, and we can see that we're using TLS version 1.2. Perfect. Now let's create a user that requires SSL to validate that we can connect this way. The require SSL command is the one that validates that we can only use SSL to connect. Now let's try logging in.
We can see with this user using SSL, we're connected correctly. Now let's try to log in with SSL disabled. With SSL mode disabled, even with the correct password, we're not able to log in to the database. This is perfect. Now that we've got the Single Store database engine connected securely, let's connect Single Store Studio. In the docs, we can see that we need to set HTTPS certificate file and HTTPS certificate key file in the memsql configuration file. Let's do that. Though not required, let's also change the port to make it more obvious that this will be secured with SSL. We'll save the file, and we'll restart Single Store Studio to get these changes to take effect. Now back in our browser, let's log into the new port. Now that we're connected to Single Store Studio, let's log into our database. Now we can see that not only are we connected securely with the lock, but here in our certificate, we do have a trust chain based on that original Mixert root certificate that we installed. Now that we've got both the database engine and Single Store Studio secured, let's turn on a secure WebSocket that allows us to connect from various applications. We have here a React app that is trying to connect on that WebSocket and is currently failing. Let's turn on the WebSocket so that we can get this app to connect. We want to make sure we turn on the socket for all the aggregators, but not any of the leaf nodes. If we connect directly to the leaf nodes, we can't run queries. In this case, we only have one main aggregator, so we'll turn on the socket for this aggregator. Now that we've set the WebSocket port to 9443, we'll restart all the nodes to take effect. Technically, we need only restart the aggregators, but restarting everything can't hurt. Now that we've got everything restarted, let's adjust our React app. Notice how we're using the SSL only user, and we're using this connection from this memsql websockets.js package. This memsql websockets.js package is a fork of the MySQL driver that just swaps in the connection details with a socket. Now that we've got this port set correctly, let's come back to React and refresh our app. Ooh, we didn't create our database yet. Let's do that. Now with that data cr created, let's refresh our React app. Great, we got a live connection from React directly into our database without the need to proxy through MemSQL Studio. Now let's use this proxy for MemSQL Studio as well. In the docs, we can go look for the MemSQL Studio.hcl file, which is the cache of all of the connections to our data store. Let's edit that. Here's our single store database. We need to change the port to our SSL port. We'll turn on WebSocket. And we also need to update the host name. Now, if we are connecting straight from MemSQL to the engine, it would be running on localhost. But we're connecting from the browser now to the engine, so we need the IP address of our machine. Now that we've got that connection set, let's log out and back into Single Store Studio. Now, if we pull up the F12 developer tools,
Now let's take the new connection out for a spin. Here in the network connection, we can search for proxy, and we'll see the various SSL connections to the WebSocket port. Here's the result set that we got. It's all traveling via SSL from the browser directly to the engine and back. We were able to secure all of the pieces of single store. We grabbed an SSL certificate with a trust chain, trusted it in both Windows and in Linux. We secured the single store engine by setting the configuration and restarting all the nodes. We secured single store studio by setting the certificate in place and restarting the single store service. Then we enabled the WebSocket so that we could connect both from React and from single store studio. Then we modified the single store studio configuration file to allow us to connect directly from the browser to the database engine over the WebSocket. Thanks for watching.